Boom. Not one, not two, but all supervolcanoes on Earth just exploded at the same time. Say goodbye to summer, crops, sunlight, and probably modern civilization. Welcome to the apocalypse you didn't ask for. But hey, it's happening anyway. Before Earth turns into a smoky meatball, let's talk about what a supervolcano actually is. A regular volcano is like a soda can that fizzes out. A supervolcano? That's a shaken up two liter bottle of doom with no cap. They don't just erupt, they detonate, ejecting thousands of cubic kilometers of ash, lava, and gas into the sky. There are around 20 known supervolcanoes on Earth. We're talking Yellowstone in the US, Toba in Indonesia, Taupo in New Zealand, Campi Flegre in Italy, Ira in Japan, and several terrifying deep sea giants you've never heard of. Each one has the power to bury civilizations. Now imagine they all erupt together. What happens next isn't just a natural disaster, it's a full planetary reboot. One, immediate effects, day one to seven. In seconds, the world changes. Columns of ash blast into the stratosphere from every corner of the Earth. Lightning crackles through black clouds. Day turns into night in less than 48 hours. Ash clouds stretch across continents. Air travel halts, GPS fails. Communication satellites are jammed. The global supply chain instantly shattered. Cities begin choking on ash. Roads are buried. Buildings collapse under the weight. Breathing becomes dangerous. Volcanic ash is made of microscopic shards of glass. Just one deep breath can scar your lungs for life. Face masks become more valuable than gold. Emergency services are overwhelmed. Entire regions lose power. Crops are buried and poisoned. Panic spreads faster than the lava. This isn't a movie. This is just the beginning. Two, volcanic winter, month one to year five. With the skies darkened, sunlight struggles to reach the surface. Temperatures plummet across the globe. We enter what scientists call a volcanic winter. Depending on where you live, the average global temperature could drop anywhere from five to 15 degrees Celsius. That's enough to destroy growing seasons everywhere. Summer never comes. Crops fail, rain patterns shift. Some areas become deserts, others freeze over. Agriculture collapses. Food reserves run out in months. Famine hits every continent, regardless of wealth or infrastructure. Forget importing anything. Ships can't navigate toxic oceans, and planes aren't flying through the ash-filled sky. The blackout of the sun continues for years. Ice sheets start expanding. Even tropical countries begin to see frost. Entire ecosystems collapse. Humanity isn't starving gradually, it's starving fast. Three, mass extinction. Level chaos, the devastation isn't limited to humans. Plants die off without sunlight, photosynthesis halts, forests wither, grasslands dry up, herbivores starve, carnivores follow, coral reefs bleach and collapse due to ocean acidification. Massive amounts of sulfur dioxide and CO2 injected into the air begin falling back as acid rain. Lakes turn toxic, soil becomes infertile, Marine food chains collapse. Fish populations crash. Birds drop dead in flocks. Insects vanish. And once you lose the bugs, you lose everything. We may survive in bunkers or isolated zones, but most animals won't be so lucky. The last time Earth faced this kind of eruption, nearly 75% of all species went extinct. And that was from just one volcano. Now imagine 20 or more. Four, geopolitics, world war ash. As the planet turns colder and food vanishes, chaos erupts politically. Countries in unlivable zones, blanketed in ash or frozen solid, try to migrate to safer regions. We're talking about over 2 billion people on the move. Governments collapse, militaries fracture, riots break out in every major city. Nuclear powers get nervous. Desperation sets in. Nations begin to weaponize what resources they have left. Wars ignite over food, water, and territory. Refugees are denied entry. Borders close violently. Some nations begin launching preemptive strikes just to survive. This isn't a war between good and evil. It's a war between the starving and the starving. Civilization collapses not because of lava, but because of us. Five, Yellowstone alone? Let's not forget history. We've seen a glimpse of this horror before. Around 74,000 years ago, the Toba supervolcano erupted in Indonesia. 
The resulting ash cloud caused a global volcanic winter that may have reduced humanity to fewer than 10,000 individuals. That was one eruption, just one. Now multiply that by 20. The ash cloud wouldn't just darken the skies, it would wrap the earth in death. These eruptions aren't firework shows, they're extinction events. The historical record is crystal clear. Supervolcanoes break civilizations. If they all go off together, there may be no civilization left to break. 6. How long would it last? The eruption itself might last days or weeks, but the aftermath? That's measured in decades. The ash and gas pumped into the sky will take years to settle. The volcanic winter could last up to five years, or longer. If feedback loops kick in, crop failure could continue for a full decade. But the real recovery? That could take centuries. Rebuilding infrastructure, re-establishing economies, restarting agriculture, recreating supply chains. It's not just about survival, it's about civilization being reborn from scratch. Some humans might survive in underground shelters, tropical zones, or isolated islands. But we wouldn't emerge as the same species. Technology would regress. Education systems would vanish. Power grids would rot. It would be like the Renaissance all over again. If the Renaissance had Wi-Fi, broken iPhones, and radiation scars. 7. Could this actually happen? Let's be honest, it's extremely unlikely. Supervolcanoes don't communicate. They aren't part of some global conspiracy. They don't coordinate eruptions on a group text saying, blow up at 5 p.m. PST. However, it's not impossible. A massive asteroid strike, a sudden tectonic plate shift, or a core destabilization event could theoretically set off a chain reaction. The odds are low, but the consequences are so high that scientists take it seriously. And that's why we monitor them. 8. Any good news? Yes, thankfully. We're watching them. Yellowstone? Monitored constantly by seismologists and satellites. Toba? Still stable. Taupo? Quiet. Campi Flagre? Okay, that one's bubbling more than we'd like. But scientists are keeping a close eye. We have early warning systems, gas readings, satellite imaging, AI models predicting magma pressure and crust activity. We can't stop the Earth from erupting, but we can get a head start on evacuation, mitigation, and survival. Humanity has survived ice ages, plagues, world wars, and we can survive this too if we're prepared. The real threat isn't just the volcanoes, it's being caught off guard. If this blew your mind like a caldera in Meltdown, smash that like button, share this chaos with a friend, and subscribe for more what-if disasters that'll either ruin your day or save your life. Drop a comment. What's the craziest disaster you think humans could survive? Let's debate in the ashes. This is Mindscape, where science meets imagination, and the world goes boom.